Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is part two of the uh, build video for the Panzer IV F from Tamiya. So my usual trick when I'm using MRP is to give it a base coat of uh, Tamiya because it's a nice flat color and it gives the MRP something to bite into. Uh, so for that, I'm going to be using the Tamiya uh, Desert Africa Core color, which is XF92. They've got two. Um, they're both a little bit off, really. What they're really trying to go for is RAL 8000 and 7008, so 7008. Um, and that is the two-tone uh, sort of low contrast scheme that the uh, that, that the Panzers had in uh, when they were in the desert. So that's Tropin One. Then there was Tropin Two, which is a couple of different colours, a slight variation on it. So here you can see very sped up is me um, just going in circular motions, putting on the uh, RAL Eight Thousand, I believe. I might get the two mixed up, but basically one's the base coat and one's the camouflage over the top. Uh, so I'm putting this over. This is a really good colour match for uh, what it's meant to be, which is 8,000. And um, you can see the Tamiya undercoat there, and you can see it's a little bit off. Uh, if you want a better representation of what this paint scheme looks like, it's what the Tiger at Bovington is painted in. So uh, that's Tropin 1, uh, low contrast scheme. And that's what I'm going to do this one in. Now, uh, this is a vehicle. You can see now the difference in contrast between the turret, which hasn't had MRP painted on it, and the hull, which has now had the MRP on it. If you go around in the circular motions like I was doing as well, you get a bit of pre-shading come through, so it's a nice effect. Um, so the reason we've got a desert tank in Russia is uh, based on kind of what's happening at the time. So in 1942... Um, the campaign in Africa is really fast dwindling down and at the same time you've got the campaign in the east which is winding up for the sort of autumn winter phase uh, in 1942. Here you can just see wheel masks, it's a very old set, this is what I've got. Um, so we paint the wheel rubber black, use the wheel mask just to mask off the rubber and then paint it the base coat colour. So, uh, in 1942, there's a new push down onto the southern front, um, I believe. I'm pretty sure this is all correct. Um, and for that, uh, there's obviously new vehicles coming through. Uh, in the production of these vehicles and aircraft, it happens for aircraft as well, they're in the crossover period. Just showing you here, this is the camouflage colour coming in. Um, and because of that, they're, they're producing vehicles in uh, desert schemes. And then they're being shipped out when there is no uh, there is no desert war to go to, or the fronts failed, so they die, or they just need more in the south uh, offensive in Russia. So they send these aircraft and vehicles to the southern front of Russia. So they turn up in these desert colours of Tropin One. Often it gets confused that it's Dunkel Gale, but that doesn't come in until kind of like June 1943. So that's a bit different again. Uh, but uh, Tropin One, Tropin Two schemes were were. Coming on to the southern front in uh, in Russia, uh, both in aircraft and vehicles, and there's quite a lot of variation. Uh, when they get over there, some of the crews and the uh, units apply field application um, camouflage, usually using Panzer Grey. Uh, so that's um, Dunkel Grau. So what that really gets us to is the position of what was this vehicle doing? Well. Looking at the Tamiya instructions, you can see this is what I've gone for. This is my interpretation of what I think it was. Um, the only picture I could see of this specific vehicle is very close up. And on that vehicle, there was no squiggles, <laughs> he says. On this vehicle now, there is a lot of squiggles. So what I'm trying to do is replicate one of these um, uh, sort of field applied uh, camouflage schemes now it's not that this is necessarily wrong or right um i think it is a little bit wrong to be honest um but it just does not look good on a model i don't know what you've got to do to make it look good i had a number of attempts and in a minute you'll see i went to a, a paint mule to try and get it going as well um and and this is using panzer gray as the field applied camouflage and i'm just not sure it's a good scheme now, I'm not saying I can't, it's because I, I 
you know, I couldn't do it, so it's not good. It's not that. It's a very difficult scheme to pull off as well. But the colours are so strong. As you can see, as I start going around here, I don't think you're going to really have a good looking model out of it. Um, now, there were certainly, there are photos. There's certainly photos of the Panzer IV Fs in this scheme, where it is uh, either just one or two of the colours of Trop in one scheme, and then having this uh, this dark grey over the top in squiggle patterns. But yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make for a good model in my eyes. I don't like it. So, uh, long story short, you can see here I'm, I'm sort of trying to uh, get the thin lines to be sprayed. But uh, I don't actually go for this. We just go for a straight up uh, tropping scheme. Um, the other controversy as well is that it is actually only one colour. So, the RAL uh, 8000. I know this is getting very complicated, but hopefully you're with me. Um, and then instead of having the patches like the Bovington Tigers got, for instance, which is the full-on Troppen 1 scheme, it could have been camouflage patches of German grey. That's basically the shorthand of the story, which uh, may have a few little problems on it, but there's a couple guys I know that follow the channel that can certainly shore, shore any of those um, uh, misquotes that I've just may have done there um, and, and get the right information across to you. But uh, that's basically the shorthand of it. Either way, Tammy has got it wrong because they, they they give you a kind of a weird scheme, which I'm not sure is correct at all. Um, and it wasn't for me. So I thought we'll go straight up for a trop in one because I, I, uh, I know that uh, there are some vehicles going over into the east that definitely do just stay in that scheme. Uh, there's a famous picture in colour which shows a vast a difference in... Um, tones and colours of a whole load of vehicles. Uh, so they've got German grey, drop in one, drop in two, all sorts, all mixed together. Because I guess, you know, when push comes to shove, it doesn't really matter. You just get your vehicles out and, and hope for the best. So after that little detour on the painting, we're now back to what I started with before I put the squiggles on. Um, and we are now putting the decals on, which are fine. Um, I'm not sure if I show it in this. It may be a spoiler for next week, but... You see that little red devil there on the side of the turret? That lasted right until the final moment when I was blowing a little bit of dust off and I obviously hadn't got the, the decal to adhere correctly and the airbrush got underneath it and blew it off and uh, that was a problem. Luckily I managed to, to blag it by finding the same symbol in uh, my decal stash. So uh, I, I dodged a bullet there, but uh, yes. <laughs> Make sure your decals are um, adhered properly is, is all I could say. Uh, typical Dam Tamiya decals go on very well, fine for armour, a little bit thick on the aircraft, can be problematic, but I don't find it an issue on armour. Um, if you think the carrier film is going to be a problem, just cut tight up to the uh, the decal and it shouldn't be an issue. So now the painting's done, it's actually straight on to the um, weathering, which is refreshing. You know, there's not a lot of messing about. It's quite a complicated, complex scheme, uh, but nevertheless, it's just two colours. So once it's on, it's done. And here I'm really just going through and I'm going to start with oils, then move to enamel washes and then move into mud effects with pigments and things like that. I thought I really wanted to go to town with this. So starting with a very neat pin wash, he says, you know, trying to be as neat as possible. Um, just kind of running through just to get a bit of tone going on and, um, and darken up some areas and uh, try and make the, the model pop because it is a bit of a seemingly monotone colour scheme although like I said there are two colours there you can see that low contrast kind of uh, greeny grey that's on the on the turret in patches uh, so this is just a dark brown wash it'll be one of the the many colours that you, you find in your um, oil palette uh, raw umber something like that and it's just kind of showing you the the depths I go to to try and build the layers up uh, this is a model that um, I think it's as far as I've got as far as weathering uh, is in terms of having the look I want. Uh, but I still fell short in a few areas. There's, there's more I could have done. There's a bit I did a bit too much in places. Uh, lost my way. And the, the, the scheme was very tricky. Um, picking this desert scheme, it's not like having a three-tone Dunkel Gelb uh, or late war scheme. It was quite tricky to, to get the sort of final finesse and, and get it to pop because it's kind of got a yellow ochre to it. it I just found it a bit difficult. Um, I don't I didn't know what I was going for, but I couldn't I couldn't get there if you know what I mean. Um, but that that'll come, you know. It's um, 
it's a very nice model and a very nice scheme as far as being different because you know a lot of people look at it initially like it's a like it's a desert vehicle and we we do put a fair bit of mud over this one so um and then we have the the panzer black uniform so oh and i bring it on to a little diabase as well so once uh, we've got some fine details on you can see next session put a lid over your thinners and they should stay they evaporate if the cat evaporate then they stay and uh, get your um oil palette into a Tupperware box and it should last for a little bit longer. Uh, so then again, we're back on to uh, detail, uh, pin washing and weathering, it's just picking out details. Once that's done, we have a little bit of over, um, uh, I didn't say overspray, we, we have it outside of the lines basically. So just go over with neat thinner like I was showing you before with a neat brush and pushing it back. Now it's into chipping. So again, like I said, I wanted to kind of develop all the skills in this one and try and have a go at everything. So I don't usually do chipping, but I thought I'd go for it here. And what we've got is a number of colors just to chip back through with the base tone. So these colors here, these Citadel colors, are to kind of chip back through the camouflage paint. So maybe get a bit of wear and patina, not necessarily chipping through the base coat, but showing that it's worn, so lightening it in areas. And then we're always also using the um, chipping colors from Ammo and from Vallejo. I'm just having a look there where I've put a few little bits on um, around the rim there where a little bit of wear, and that's just the base coat chipping. Um, we will, I will show you some of this being applied. Um, we're also sort of pick out in the camouflage colors as well. So uh, where there's a camouflage gone over, you can chip the camouflage color to go back to the base coat, if that makes sense. I'm just showing you again where it's been applied for the first run. We will take a moment to, um, to actually look at this through. But you can see where we are with the weathering so far, where it's, it's given it a lift <coughs> and defined some areas. And it's just sort of these small bits that we do here just sort of go a long way to starting to build the story and and, um, and the depth to the model. Little nicks and chips here and there. All just applied with a very, very fine brush like I was showing you uh, a couple of parts ago. Um, getting, getting a fine point and then just working around areas that get a lot of use. So crew doors and sort of scuff areas as you can see just tiny little dots and just um rather than just having individual dots i like to try and sort of get a line going and then maybe larger dots along it if that makes sense um i must admit though i mean it's, it's perfect it's great for me having a video like this being able to get in really tight and show you uh but <laughs> You know, when you take this to a show, I mean, you just, it's its difficult to see these sort of things. So you need to bear that in mind. Don't be uh, um, upset, for instance, if you go to this sort of level and <laughs> you enter into a competition or something and people can't see it. It's, um, you know, it's a bit hard going at these shows with lighting. And the first thing that is gone is, is this kind of detail. But you want to be doing it for the right reasons. You know, if you're building a load of models just for a table at a show, perhaps not worry too much about the weathering because it doesn't always show. But if you're going to um, I'll be doing it for your collection or you're going to document it like this or very high res photos, then this sort of stuff really pays off. Uh, and it's, it's a good thing to, to get into uh, because it's always chipping. Um, it will show very much on this jack here because we started with nothing, obviously. And then come the end, it, it's quite a nice warm piece. And it's it's a feature as well, feature piece, because right on the side of the vehicle. And it makes for a nice um, a nice small detail come the end. Um, you could also go along like the tool clamps as well. That'd be a good place, that things that get moved all the time. And then we're around to the back as well. There you can see a bit of that chipping building up now where we got couple of different tones so we've got a couple of the different browns and then we've got the base coats coming back through as well those those plainer colors uh it it does start to make the difference i know it's a bit dull trouble trouble with the lighting with my hands in the way uh, but we're just going on and making a few more bits almost cut the video a bit short there uh so now we're on to the idlers so uh, they obviously get a lot of wear as well with metal on metal 
and this is the sponge technique. So, you know, there's, there's many different ways to go about the chipping, and uh, this does go on a bit heavy, so I keep going off camera and dabbing it off so I get to the right amount. Um, you can always rub it back because it's only uh, acrylic, so it's, it's easy with a bit of water before it dries just to rub it back. But yeah, you can see the effect. Very natural. Uh, no need to spend a lot of time going around with a, a detail brush in these areas, especially if you're going to put mud on. It's just kind of suggesting the idea that there is some chipping. Uh, and if you do that, the eye should do the rest when you're looking at it to think, oh, right, well, you know, you're telling yourself the story, if that makes sense, if you do it right. It's all a trick of the eye. It's bringing a whole load of things together to, to tell one complete story. And um, as long as tonally everything's sort of fits... It shouldn't be too much of an issue. Apologies for the uh, fast movement, but uh, I've got this quite sped up. Just to show you, and you can see it's drying up on the sponge a bit there, but I just about got what I wanted. And um, we're starting now to just about creep onto the area where you can just do too much. We're just heading towards too much weathering. So. Uh, too much chipping, sorry. Oh, you can't have too much weathering, can you? <laughs> um, so, that's the time to stop. You can always come back and add some more chips afterwards, but if, you, if you've chipped around the whole vehicle and you think, right, that's enough, you're starting to go back around, you might be getting to the point where you're, you're then taking it to a very heavily worn look. If that's what you want to do, fine. But if, if you want to keep it all toned in, like I said, telling that same story, then we need to move on from the chipping. And for that, we start with the exhaust like you've just seen then we go on to the tracks the tracks need a wash painted with uh, rubber black so if the tracks need a wash we go to ammo and use the track wash nice and easy uh, it's a good color brings them down gives them again a nice sort of subdued tone and i just pile it on like this making sure it's not too heavy to um kind of obscure detail although it's so thin i'm not sure it would dry and do that but uh, something to bear in mind, you, you, you know, even when slapping it on like we are. Now we zoomed in, you'll be able to see that um, it, this is the kind of what it does. It just adds a bit of de depth. So you've got, I still always start off with black. I don't know whether that's right or not, but it always gives me a good um, sort of starting colour. So this is, this is what we kind of get. As you can see, just a bit of darkness going in there, a bit of brown just starting to get a little bit of depth in there and then we'll build the rest up with the weathering that's to come so as you can see one unweathered side nice and clean all been pin washed in there so we've we've got some of the depth but we haven't put any weathering or pigments or anything like that in and what we're going to do is try to uh, build up a kind of matted on mud look kind of like a dryish mud a little bit of a shower you know and it's it's kind of matted it on there as you can see here's one i did earlier so lots of contrasting colors a lot of depth all that's been done here is the the side of the hole and the wheels we haven't done the tracks and you can see there's a bit of depth there's a bit of um texture it's obviously you know 3d is as far as you can see uh, roughness and that's what we're looking for. Lots of different colours. Really gives the idea and, and gets the, the kind of brain. And when you look at it, you're thinking, right, there's a lot going on there. Uh, lots of different colours, not just one colour, for instance. So how we build that up is just with layers. So starting as we do here, we've got a panel line wash in neutral brown. We've also got um, cursed soil. And then for our pigments, we're going to use good old Europe Earth. One of the old classics. Uh, we've also got some dark earth humbral weathering powder as well not out of choice really just in the back of the uh, cupboard and then some very old mig europe dust as well to use up uh, now i use this but you don't need to use this the, i i picked this up in a shop this is now well out of production uh, vallejo do a similar product product so to ak and ammo it's really just a kind this is an enamel based i think the ones you can get now, AK Ammo and Vallejo, are all uh, PVA, sort of water-based. And it's really just paste in a kind of sticky texture. Uh, 
<laughs> in a sticky carrier, sorry. So because this is enamel based, we thin this with enamel thinners. So we just go on heavy and this starts to give our texture look. So um, giving that 3D effect, if that makes sense. So all, all we do, we don't, again, we don't just slap it on. There is a bit of method to it. But at the same time, you know, we do have to get it on there. So it's just a case of dabbing it on, working through where you want it. Make sure you don't get it where you don't want it. So, for instance, on tyres and stuff uh, and any movable sort of areas, you'd see it would rub off. But generally, all the fixed points are going to have this built up on it. And then uh, as it's starting to dry off, we just have a look. And just before it really dries back, we go now over now with the Kursk soil, which is an enamel wash. And that's really to take that dark color away. All we want to do is just kind of stain it. So we're using that paste that we've got and we're changing the color from a dark gray to a kind of, well, Soviet, not Soviet, a Russian soil colour, which is obviously a very good one, is Cursed Soil. Uh, and that's, again, these are all pigment-based, so um, these enamel washes, so they will, again, help build up that kind of dusty look and that textured look as well. And that's the kind of effects you want, you know, a little bit mixed in, not all the same colour, it never is. If you look at muddy vehicles, there's a lot going on generally, or the interesting ones it is. And then we just kind of mix that together. Apologies for going slightly off screen. Uh, now I would suggest kind of working through the whole uh, underside of the hole, but I wanted to film this in one go. So I thought well, we'll just build it all up. So now that's wet, we're now tapping on loosely. So we're not touching, we're just going above and then tapping the brush with the European uh, earth pigments. And then we tap them off the, the vehicle and where we don't want them on the running gear we just kind of let it pile up and you can see there's very dark bits now this will completely change when it dries back once all of this is dried it will get a completely different sort of tone to it and it will look much um much more like what we're going for uh, so now we're starting to build up the upper side of it where we're going to add some darker tones so we're going on with a rather dark looking um, enamel wash just to kind of get some streaking going and that's all it is it's it's really just kind of thinking about what's going to happen so we'd have rain marks going down the inside of the fenders because it's not going to be waterproof the hull itself should be waterproof but the join between the fenders and the hull is not going to be waterproof so we'd have rain running down the back there also splashes going up and running down or you've got the matted on mud and you go through some water. So it's all just about sort of going back and forth with your chosen layers. I would suggest that you pick your colours, maybe three or four, and then work with those. So don't bring in then extra colours, because it can get a bit... Um, <laughs> I don't want to use it, but uh, muddy. You can sort of muddy the water a little bit, and um, you kind of lose track of where you're going. Um, and like you can see, I've got it's got a bit heavy on the wheels. So now I'm going back over with some uh, thinned uh, enamel wash. And then that is helping just to level down some of the raised areas. Because, of course, on the wheels where they're spinning, they, I'm guessing they wouldn't be um, tons of texture on there. It would fall off quite quickly. So, again, it's just using... Because you can use the textured bits and the pigments to then uh, merge in and, and make a colour in itself. So whilst we're letting that dry, I'm going to turn our attention to the wheel uh, tracks. Now, I wouldn't suggest doing this. Uh, I went down a, a path that I sort of talked myself into. I'm not sure it was necessary putting the very high polished silver on these um, these tracks at this point or at all. But that is what I'm doing. Just using some silver paint and brushing it on. But I'm not sure it's really what we want. Uh, here you can see I've put quite a lot of pigment on um, to try and build up more on what we did once it's dried. So now I'm just running on through there with doing it different ways. So instead of having wet washes on the tank and then dabbing the pigment onto it, we're putting the pigment on loose and then using the thinner to fix it. So you can see it's a rather dark thinner, uh, rather a dark wash, enamel wash. You could also use thinners if you just wanted to keep the colour of the pigment. But again, I'm trying to colour shift the pigment. 
just to kind of get an idea. And this is on the other side now as well. So we're, we're trying to kind of match up the two areas, get an idea of how it's going, get some streaking. And there you can see how it's starting to build up. Once it's dried back, we're getting some staining in there and it's looking quite natural. And that's what that looks like. And a quick tip as well, if you've got hair dryer, that brings this process forward considerably because you can dry stuff back to the point of it being um, touch dry, we'll say. I mean, it isn't. You shouldn't touch it. But, I mean, you can go on with, with um, washes and apply effects on top of it and it's not going to change it too much. You'll, you'll know what the colour is going to be. And what I quite like here as well is where on the left side we've got dark tones running in from the side of the wheels. And then it sort of fades up, being a little bit lighter in the middle. And I think we're getting somewhere now here. It's starting to build up. Now we've got to do it around the front where I've just got some dark tones. Got the matted on colours, as you can see. That's how that dries. Now we want to lighten that up as well, using the same techniques. But again, not cause too much of an issue uh, around these tracks and spare stuff that might have been moved. And then we, all, we also want to bring the tracks in line. So it's all about... Um, you know, keeping the same message across all the areas, if that makes sense. Not having one heavily uh, weathered area. And then just leaving it, because it tends to stand out. Same effect again, putting on a wet wash, using pigments, dabbing them in, and then using the brush maybe just to work them in a little bit more, where on a you know metal surface that's working like tracks would be, it would be more matted in rather than just sitting there. And obviously working on both sides of the tracks like we've just been doing there, so making sure the top side as well. And now it's working in some details and just going back around the rest of the vehicle just to work in um, some smaller details, like I'm saying. So around the mudguard there, getting some uh, kind of effects going up. And now we can have a look at the finished result. The tracks tie it in, that dusty look. Uh, obviously want to get it off any of the, the rolling parts. Like I said, it, it, we're not going to have it going through wet mud. We're going to have it sort of having gone through wet mud, if that makes sense. It's kind of autumn, just as the rains are starting. So very dusty vehicle, rained on a couple times. Dusty roads, rained on a couple times. It's going to presumably cause havoc and plenty of mud. pleased with the tracks as well and around the rear there that kind of heavy look is what I was going for I'm reasonably happy with it um, and then the next thing is obviously to tie that into the base when we get to it so now we're just going to go around to the front of the vehicle and we're going to start kind of working in some uh, detail there and trying to kind of get a kind of a, a, the techniques like OPR it's 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 meant to be just kind of changing the tone and, and grubbing up the surface, just using oils and enamel washes. And it, it's really just starting on one side or one panel and kind of just working around grime, really, and adding it in. It's a slow process, but I think it's it's worth it in the end.
So once we've got the sort of initial layer on, we then go back over and, and try and work that in. Again, it's, it's mostly just sort of stippling techniques and that sort of thing, and just building it up over time. And it starts to give you a nice worked area. Imagine crew clambering all over it uh, when it's muddy, when it's wet, when it's not, muddy boots, etc. It's kind of leaving that effect. And then taking that through to other areas of the vehicle as well. Just putting in some detail washes and grime. And just carrying that on all the way around the, uh, the vehicle. And then that starts to get us towards the end. So the next thing to come in part three will be adding the figures and um, starting the base. And then just tying in any final little details with the tank into the base to make it look rather natural. And here on this last uh, frame, really, we're just kind of going around the vehicle now just to see what's been done and give you an idea of what the, the kind of the tone we've set and trying to do this in, in every single section of the tank as we go around to tie it in, not leaving any area uh, missed and because um, otherwise it stands out. Having kind of dust going in here, there and everywhere, well-worn areas, you can see a kind of like blur, sort of um, soft edge around where these doors are, which is where there'd be a lot of uh, patina built up. So that's the idea. Uh, we'll see more in the next video when we get, um, get into the final bit and we get the proper pictures done and tie it into the diorama. So I've got a few more um, photos like last time just showing you what, what um, the final outcome is going to be. So thanks for staying tuned. As always, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to support the channel, there's a couple of ways you can do that below, following the links to PayPal and Patreon. If you have any comments, uh, put them down below. Love to uh, read them and see them and hear your feedback. And as I say, next week, we'll finish this one off with part three, tying it into a base with some figures, and then we'll move on to a new project after that. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.